So what kinds of workbooks can you create? I break it down to two um, paths you can take, right? So one is what I like to call exercises slash activities. And then the other one is called a companion workbook. So what does this mean? It means that whatever direction that you take, you can make this as complicated or as simple as you want. Now, when I say complicated, I don't mean that in a bad way. Just complicated is just a little bit more time and a little bit more work, okay? So here's what I mean. So exercise slash activities, this is like my law of attraction journal. This is why um, these books don't take very long to put together. Uh, they usually don't contain everything you've ever taught. And they're usually not entire processes or systems. And they're way easier and faster to create. So you'll see my example. You could have one exercise in your book and just repeat it over and over and over again. So all you need to do is create the exercise and then you pretty much have an entire book that you can sell. The next one is companion workbooks, right? So um, they usually contain a large amount of what you teach. So think like if you have some kind of process or system or framework, maybe you teach a course and you wanna put that into a workbook. Maybe you already have a book and you want to turn that into a workbook. Have you ever read a book and, you know, you read the concept and they tell you, oh, this is what you need to do. And then you just move on to the next chapter. Whereas if you actually did the activities that they told you to do, you would probably experience that transformation that the book, that of what you intended when you bought the book, right? What you envisioned yourself doing. But because books, they don't really allow you to write in them or they don't give you a space for your thoughts and everything, it's hard to do that. And that's why when a workbook, it, it, it's designed to create that transformation, like do this before you move on to the next thing, right? Um, and these types of companion books, they usually can take a little bit longer to create. Sometimes there's multiple editions as time goes on. So let's say you have a framework and that framework develops over time. That framework that you had five years ago changes, right? So you can make uh, another workbook or you can just keep updating your, your workbook. There's so much you can do, so many different avenues you can take and decide. So I'm going to just give you a demo so that you can see for yourself what um, an, ex an exercise or activity workbook looks like. So I'm going to hop out of this and I'm going to go right here and you're going to see this is one of my law of attraction journals. Now I'm going to point out a couple things before we move ahead. There are many programs that you can use to create your workbook. My program of choice is PowerPoint. I love using PowerPoint. Um, but there's other programs like Microsoft Word, Google Docs, Google Slides, Apple Pages, Canva. Um, there's a lot of different like third party private systems where you let you design content, right? You've probably seen some of those. And the point is, is that you just pick one, pick the one that you want or pick the one that you like. And what's great about it is these days, everything is really interchangeable. Once you know one, you know how to use them all. You know how to make a text box. You know how to insert an image. You know how to insert, um, uh, designs, whatever it is, and shapes and form, whatever. So, uh, like I said, my favorite is Microsoft. I use Microsoft 365. It gives you the latest versions. Um, it's only getting better and better, and I just love it. Um, so that I wanted to point that out. So the first page here, usually I just put the cover, 
The second page is the copyright page. Now, this particular journal, to make that a little bit bigger, as you can see, has, it has two pages of content, two pages only, right? So not a lot of content there. Uh, thought process behind this, I wanted to welcome people. I wanted to kind of say who I was, why I wrote this journal, why, uh, what they might be getting out of it, right? Just some information behind that. And then uh, the second page here is some instructions on how to use it. Now, another thing I want to point out here is that the way that you make a lot of impact and a lot of money from your journal or workbook is you always want to be sending people somewhere else. Okay, so if they're holding something physical, you want to send them online. Go here, I have more training. Um, go here for this extra download, right? So you always want to kind of bring them somewhere else and continue that journey. And of course, if they're online, you want to have the thing that differentiates you is having something physical in their hands that they can hold and use that you created for them. Okay. So think about that and the experience that you want. You want that 360 experience with your customers, meaning you are omnipresent. You want to be everywhere in front of them. Right. So the next page here. So this is, um, this is an exercise book. It, these are called focus wheels. Okay. And, um, again, I did not develop this, but they're really, really cool for, um, transformation and some, and creating things in your life that maybe you, you don't have, or maybe you don't realize you have it, or maybe you, um, you don't necessarily know, um, the truths about a situation and you want to kind of get to that. Um, don't want to get too far into focus wheels. We could probably spend all day, but as you can see, this book is just made up of hundreds of focus wheels because this is the kind of thing. Uh, and this is what you want for your workbook is something that people can do over and over and over again. So maybe someone envisions something that they want, um, in their personal life, but then there's another thing that they want in their professional life. Maybe there's another thing they want in their relationship, right? So they can do as many focus wheels as they as they want. <laughs> focus wheels up the wazoo. And then uh, you see here, what I did was I usually just make an example of me creating a real focus wheel. And I, and I wrote, and I did this uh, on my iPad, so I, I, I just wrote it out because that's what their focus wheels are going to look like. Some scratchy uh, handwriting, chicken scratch there. And, you know, it looks more realistic, right? So um, this goes on for about 100 pages. And I just, you know, saved this as a PDF. And I have my book. The last page is uh, just me and asking for a review. All right, so does, does that seem very hard? As I switch back to the PowerPoint, go ahead and let me know in the chat box if that looks very hard. Uh, or put easy, put, give me an easy if, uh, if you think that you can do something like this too. All right, so let me the current slide. So as I showed you, um, I created three different journals. Um, this is my latest one. It's called, uh, it, it's, it has to do with segment intending, which is another awesome exercise. And I actually was a little creative with that, this last one, because I made it like a quarantine edition. I love, I love being a self publisher because we can do whatever the heck we want. Um, and I even made this little logo um, called wishful walking. Walking was something I did a lot in quarantine, and that's what inspired this book. Uh, so 
couple cool things about these journals, 11K in three months. Most of them took me less than two hours to create. I know that because I created one of them on a flight from New York to Florida when we were able to fly. And I was done um, on that plane ride. And that was cool. Uh, now, granted, I already knew the concept of what I wanted to create. Uh, when I teach people to create journals, I kind of say, okay, don't, don't rush to the computer. Don't rush to PowerPoint. Don't rush to your design tool. You know, kind of close your eyes and envision